Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Come in and take your seats that's here. And those of you out there on the internet watching via the amazing technology that we have these days that allows us to share the service with you. Uh, we appreciate you coming or viewing, as the case may be. Um, Pastor Miss Janie are down at the beach, praise the Lord, having a good time, I'm sure, and getting refreshed, which is always a good thing. And uh, I am privileged to minister tonight. This is my first evening in the new facility of ministering, which is uh, exciting to me. And uh, I'm glad that everybody that can join us has, uh, has joined us. And we're going to go ahead and get started this evening. Don't have a very long message, and whenever I say that, I say, Lord, make that so, <laughs> because sometimes I'll get off on a tangent, but we're going to try to keep it, keep it short and crisp this evening. Um, but let's go ahead and pray, and we'll get started. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together and just fellowship around your word, receive from the ministry of the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher of the church. Father, we open ourselves to receive this evening from your word, by your spirit. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll receive the offering at the end of the service. But let's go ahead and open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. This verse that we're going to start with is the Bible definition of faith. There are many definitions of that people have for faith, not all of which are correct. Um, there are a lot of people, I knew when I, as, as I was growing up, uh, we used to say, what faith are you? And somebody would say, well, I'm Baptist, or I'm Methodist, or Catholic, or whatever. Your faith was whatever your religious background was. But faith as we know it is not just your religious background. It's not just what you believe that you've been taught doctrinally. Now, there's nothing wrong with doctrine. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm a teacher. Uh, God uses me as a Bible teacher, and doctrine is vitally important. No question about that. But tonight, we're not talking about doctrine, per se. We're talking about what faith is. Faith that God used to create the entire universe. Everything that we have contact with here in this earth was created by God's faith. He used his faith, and he used it on purpose, and he used it as a tool, and he used it in the manner that he chose to use it. And really, that's the way faith works. Faith works the same way, whether God's using it or whether we're using it. Matter of fact, when we use God's faith, that's exactly what we are doing. We are using his faith. Faith doesn't exist in a vacuum. I'm going to let that sit there for me just a minute. Faith doesn't exist in a vacuum. Like I said, you can't just define it however you want to define it. Well, that's what this is what faith is. That's what faith is. No, the Bible tells us what faith is. So let's look at it. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is. So he's about to tell us what faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We're going to talk about that a little more in detail here in a minute, but let's keep reading. For by it, by what? By faith, the elders obtained a good report. Now, there's a lot of folks that are looking to have a good report. You know, uh, matter of fact, let me just, let me touch on something here that may rankle some religious thought. <laughs> and that's okay. You know, uh, Brother Charles Capps used to talk about kicking over sacred cows. Every so often we need to kick over a sacred cow or two uh, because they get in the way. And one of those sacred cows that we have is that uh, we want to see or hear or receive a good report. Well, that's not bad in and of itself. But you'll hear people say, Brother Bill, pray with me that when I go to the doctor, I'll receive a good report. Well, where's your faith on, in that relationship? You know, it's like you're implying, think about this now, 
you're implying if I don't get the good report, then I'm in trouble. You see what I'm saying? If you're, if you're concentrating on, I have to get a good report, then you're not really believing to receive your healing despite what the doctor may say or not say. It really doesn't matter what his report is. Now, it's always good when his report lines up with the Word of God. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I've been there. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, uh, I've told the story many times about how I ended up in the hospital and they gave me a week to live and, you know, <laughs> send my saddle home. I was done. And they did, literally told me, said, now, Mr. Bailey, we want to take you out of the hospital, send you home to die because, frankly, we can use your bed here in the hospital to help somebody uh, that we can help. We can't help you. I mean, you, you, you're done. So we're going to send you home. That's not a report you want to hear. But now I could have accepted that report. I could have said, well, the doctor said, see, where's my faith? The doctor said I have to die. I've only got a week to live. So therefore, this is it. You know, make my peace with God. Well, my peace was already made with God. I knew where I was headed. But at the same time, I had a knowing in my knower. And the knowing in my knower said, you ain't done yet. You've got things to do. There are aspects of ministry that you still need to operate in. And, uh, you know, I mean, if nothing else, just keeping the 24-7, 365 radio and TV networks going. <laughs> requires somebody to do it. And if I wasn't around, I kind of suspect it wouldn't get done. <laughs> so I knew that I had some things to accomplish. And so I said, uh, I said, Lord, I believe that I receive my healing. Well, now, as I said, the doctor's report is go home and die. But I believed that I received my healing. So I put faith in the Word of God. I confessed the Word of God according to everything we've learned through the years, and I received my healing. And the Lord got me up off that deathbed, and I improved gradually over time and got better and better and better and got to where I could do and go and, you know, do everything that I'm required to do now. So it ended up with a good report. But now the doctors also said, well, now, you know, your kidneys were failing, and, and they're working now. And your heart was failing, and it's working now. And this was failing, and that's working now. But now your liver, your liver is in bad shape. And there's nothing we can do about that. You're going to have to have uh, paracentesis, which is a long medical term, for they stick a big, long, eight-inch needle into your gut and draw fluid out because the fluid builds up around your gut. And uh, they, they said, you're going to have to do that every week, or every, I'm sorry, every four weeks for the rest of your life. No two ways about it. That's just the way it's going to be. Well, I said, no. <laughs> I don't receive that. Because, you know, it wasn't any fun having that needle stuck in you. And every time they did it, they said, now we got to be careful not to hit your bowels or hit your other organs because if we do, it could cause sepsis and then you die. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that's exciting. <laughs> I don't really want to, you know, do that. Uh, but no, had to, had to draw the fluid off, so had to have that needle stuck in there. So they stuck it in they drew off the fluid but when they sent me home they said now and in about four weeks make an appointment come in you'll be big like you're pregnant you know and uh, we'll have to get that water off of you so i started confessing same thing i confess every day every cell and every organ of my body functions perfectly as god designed it to function now i can't claim credit for that charles caps came up with that in his capsules, <laughs> I like that term, uh, and so I begin to confess that every day, every day, every day. And the, the doctor's report, as I said, was not good with regard to that liver condition. So in the process of time, I ended up going to the ICFM convention uh, down in Fort Worth, actually at Eagle Mountain Lake, and one, I believe it was Wednesday? evening, 
uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland got up to minister. And as he took the platform, he stopped. And he said, somebody here has a really serious condition with your liver and the Lord is healing you right now. Well, I was sitting in my walker here <laughs> that I'm sitting in right now. I jumped to my feet and I reached out with my hand and grabbed the air and said, that's mine, I take it now. Well, everybody around me looked at me like, what in the world is he doing? <laughs> But I received, I, I did what Gloria Copeland talks about. I took my healing. Because that's what that, that word that she used in Mark 11 says. is not receive, see, receive your healing. Uh, receive those things. That sounds real religious. No, I took it. Because that's what it's talking about. Reach out and take it. Possess it. You notice that woman with the issue of blood, when she came up, she said, she said, she said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be healed. Not if I can just touch his clothes, I might be healed. Not if I can touch his clothes, maybe he'll, I'll get his attention, he'll heal me. No, if I can touch his clothes, I shall be healed. And she did that, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus said, somebody touch me. Well, the disciples got all bent out of shape. They're like, Jesus, everybody's touching you. What were you talking about? Somebody touched you. He meant somebody touched me with a touch of faith. Somebody drew some power out of me. Somebody took their healing. Well, the woman got a little upset. She thought, oh my, is he going to take it back? <laughs> you know, I mean, she didn't know. But that wasn't Jesus' purpose. His purpose was to tell her, Woman, thy faith has made thee whole. Actually, what he prefaced it was, Fear not, thy faith has made you whole. In other words, I'm not going to take it from you. I'm not going to take it back. You took it from me by faith. Well, that's what I did. I'm sitting there. I reached out my hand. I grabbed the air. I said, I take that. That's mine in Jesus' name. Well, I didn't feel anything. I didn't have any inner or outer evidence. My liver is inside. I didn't see it, you know, and I didn't feel it. But I went around the rest of that evening. They had a reception after the, the service for ministers, and we were in the, you know, room there, and they'd prepared some snacks and so forth. And we're standing around talking, and I go from table to table. And as I'd approach the table, I'd say, I received my healing tonight. My liver is healed in Jesus' name. And of course, most of these people didn't know me from Adam. And they're all like, okay. <laughs> and then I came up on Dr. Doug uh, Wingate, uh, president of Life Christian University. And of course, I know Dr. Wingate and have a relationship with him. I came up and said, Dr. Wingate, I received my healing tonight. I took my healing from my liver. He said, I don't doubt it, Dr. Bill, I agree with you. Well, you know, I had somebody to agree with me. But I'm, I am, see, I'm doing what Brother Kenneth Hagin, the Lord spoke to him about. You know, what did the woman with the issue of blood do? She said it. She acted on it. She took her healing, and then she told it. And so I was going around telling it. And so I came up to uh, Dr. Larry Allison, the president of ICFM. I said, Dr. Allison, I received my healing. I took it. It's mine in Jesus' name. He said, I don't doubt it, Dr. Bill. I agree with you. Well, again, I didn't know anything. I went home. And the doctor ordered some tests in the process of time, about two, three months later. And she ran these tests, and she came up. She, she said, y you need to see this. And I said, what? She said, look at these numbers. Well, I don't know what's going on with the numbers. She had it on her computer screen. She said, Put, come around here, sit down behind me, and look at these numbers. So I said, what am I looking at? She said, all of these numbers, your liver, they told me when you got out of the hospital, your liver would never be right. They told me you'd have to have paracentesis. They told me in all the reports that this was going to be a problem the rest of your life. She said, I just ran these tests. You got perfect liver numbers. Every single number is textbook perfect. I said, I don't doubt it, praise the Lord. She said, I don't know what you did, but 
Keep it up. <laughs> so what have I been doing? I've been keeping it up. I've been saying every cell and every organ in my body functions perfectly as God designed it to function. And I just had another liver test. I went to a new doctor because my, <laughs> my doctor <laughs> asked me to come in for a checkup and I made an appointment and he'd cancel it. And, and <laughs> he'd reschedule it and made an appointment and he'd cancel it. This happened four times. Now we're talking over about an eight month period because it kept putting it off. Finally come to find out the doctor was sick. Well, bless his heart, I'm sorry that he got sick. But finally I got to the point I thought, well, you know, maybe I need to go find another doctor because this, this is looking pretty serious for him. So I made an appointment with another doctor and I switched doctors because my doctor was ways off anyway because where I used to live was closer to where he, he was. And now where I'm at, I went to a closer one. So I went to this new doctor, and she read all of my records. And of course, bless her heart, she said, oh my, oh my, well, we got to look at your liver. I went, well, praise the Lord, here we go. <laughs> and she said, I, I'm going to run a battery test. I got to run the whole array. Well, they took three tubes of blood, ran the whole array of tests. She got it back and said, I don't understand this. <laughs> I thought, I've been here before. She said, all these numbers are perfect. And I said, yep, yep, they sure are. Well, see, that's a period of time between four years ago, roughly, three to four years ago, and last month, and all those numbers are still perfect. So praise the Lord. Now, I got the good report is my bottom line, but... It doesn't matter what the good report is from the doctor. I'm the healed of the Lord. The Word of God is my report. The Word of God is what I'm to have faith in. So what we need to do is look at what we're supposed to look at. Okay, let me say that again. We need to look at what we're supposed to look at. Now again, there's nothing wrong with getting a good report. But if you go in with the idea, I'm going to believe the doctor will give me a good report, I like what Pastor Keith Moore says. They, somebody came up to him and says, uh, Brother Keith, believe for me that I receive a good report from the doctor. He said, I'm not going to do it. They said, what? He's trying to get their attention. He said, I'm not, go not going to do it. And he said, well, God said, well, why not? He said, because you don't need a good report from the doctor. You got a good report from the Word of God. That's where you need to put your faith. That's what you need to concentrate on. If you're moved by what you see, then you're not going to be moved by the Word of God. Now, see, that's a key. Pastor just taught on this very recently when he talked about Abraham. How Abraham did not take into account his natural circumstances. I'm paraphrasing quite a bit here. But he didn't look at his natural circumstances. He believed the Word of God. But let's keep reading. I still haven't got to the verse I'm trying to get to. Verse 3, this is where I'm trying to get to. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, that's good King James. We'll take that out of the King James. We understand that the worlds, the planets, the stars, everything in this natural realm was framed, that means set into position, Framed by the Word, that's the Word of God, that's His words uh, that came out of His mouth, so that the things which we see, the natural world, was not made of things which appear or that we normally see with our natural senses. We tend to think, of th think things like, well, the planets are made out of iron and, you know, dirt and water and all of that. Those are things that do appear. They really weren't. They do have dirt. They do have iron. They do have water. All of those things and other elements. But that's not what they were created from. 
They were created by means of God's faith. God's faith, think of it this way, God's faith is the original source. God's faith is the original energy from which all these things were created. Now, there's a law that Charles Capps talks about called the law of double reference. And I like that term. <clears throat> and one example of the law of double reference is where the Bible says, God will grant you or give you the desires of your heart. Now, you can read that, God will give you the desires of your heart, meaning if you have a desire in your heart, God will grant it to you. He will give it to you if you apply your faith. Or you can look at that as God will give you desires in your heart. In other words, he'll put desires in your heart. And it works both ways. And Charles Capps, in reference to that scripture, said this is the law of double reference. In other words, both things are true. Well, there's this verse here in verse 3. I saw this recently uh, as Keith Moore was teaching along these lines, and he said something, and the way he phrased it made me go, oh, what do you know? He said, through faith we understand. And I went, oh, through faith we understand. Now, I knew that the scripture here is talking about by means of God's faith, that's the initial substance, energy, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So I understand that's the case. But by faith, we understand. The law of double reference can come into, into play here. And if you study this out, actually, if you look at some of the other... Uh, comparative scriptures. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of different translations here in Esword. And uh, let me just read a couple of them. We won't, like I said, I got a bunch of them. But uh, the Amplified Classic says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things hoped for, being the proof of things we do not see in conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Now let me, uh, I, I, I highlighted one scripture, let me highlight, that was uh, verse 1. Let me highlight verse 3 and go back to that comparative scripture. There we go. The Amplified says, By faith we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were framed fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the Word of God, so that what we see was not made of the things which are visible. Uh, the ASV says, By faith we understand the worlds have been framed by the Word of God. The basic Bible in English says, By faith it is clear to us that the order of events was fixed by the Word of God. The CEV says, Because of our faith, we know that the world was made at God's command. You see what I'm saying? It, it actually, the way it's translated actually is that we understand it by faith. Not just, like I said, law of double reference here. Not just that we understand that faith is the means by which he did it. Okay? Now I want to try to kind of make that clear because it's easy to kind of gloss over that. Let me give you another translation. God's Word translation. Faith convinces us that God created the world through His Word. I like that one. Faith convinces us. Now, here's what I got out of this. This is where, you know, sometimes you'll hear one little verse of Scripture and the Holy Ghost will grab a hold of it and instruct you in some things. And it really blessed me. Bless my socks off. And that is this. It is by means of our faith that we are capable of understanding how faith works. Now let me say that again. It is by or through our faith that it is possible for us to understand how Faith works. How can God take this substance that you can't see? How can he take something that 
He has to use words to sling out into the, the cosmos to create planets and stars and galaxies and everything that we see from something we can't see. How can we understand that? I'm not God. I don't know how he did it down to the tiny little minute detail. I got the broad strokes, you know, what we like to call the 10,000 foot view. I kind of, I understand how he did it. Generally, he used his words and he had an image of what he wanted to see and he said it and his word brought it to pass. Okay, I got that. I don't know how he did all that. You know, as, as Brother Copeland likes to say, my peanut brain, I don't know how he, how he did that. But see, that's the thing. I'm not required to understand it in the natural. I am required to understand it through faith. I'm required to understand it by means of faith. In other words, I have to have supernatural help to understand the Bible. And somehow, that blesses me <laughs> to know that I don't have to rely on my peanut brain. I don't have to rely on my great intellect. I don't have to sit down and put a pencil to it and figure it all out. You know, if I had to, I'd have a job because <laughs> how in the world are you going to do that? I mean, this is crazy. Back in, uh, I think it was the 70s, Brother Copeland said, that they, they did a survey and they asked a bunch of college students at that time, which would have been about the time I was in college, uh, a bunch of college students, they said, does God understand radar? And the college students said, oh, no, God doesn't understand radar. I mean, <laughs> that came long after God. <laughs> what? Are you guys, I mean, that's dumb, folks. I'm sorry. God doesn't understand, understand radar because it's too new. <laughs> no. See, that's the thing. <laughs> In that regard, people are not that very bright <laughs> to think that God doesn't understand it. You know, there's a lot of people think God doesn't understand computers. Believe me, He understands computers. I've had many occasions where I've been in a situation with a computer and I didn't know how to fix it. And I'd pray and I'd say, Lord, give me wisdom on how to fix this thing. And something would just pop into my head. You know, now that's what we, we phrase it. Something just popped into my head. What it was, I got it from the Holy Ghost through my spirit. He revealed to me a bit of wisdom. And he showed me something and i go, Oh, well, let's try that. And it would work and the computer would boot and come up. And I'd think, wow, well, I'd have never thought of that. So see, God understands computers. No question. He understands them a lot better than we do. He had his own version of a computer way before we ever came up with them, okay? And as a matter of fact, I'm convinced that a lot of the inventions that, have, that man has come up with through the ages is because God gave them a revelation. They may not fully understand the where and the why and the how of it, but, you know, we like to say things like, it just dawned on me. Well, the dawned on you part was... Revelation, the light of revelation knowledge. And God sometimes reveals things to people, scientists, so forth. I mean, you take uh, um, Albert Einstein. <coughs> Excuse me, Albert Einstein, great physicist, great mathematician, uh, world-renowned as, a, as a, a, a genius, but the way he came up with the theory of relativity is he imagined himself riding a light beam in his imagination, in his mind's eye. He just imagined himself riding a light beam, and as he rode that light beam, he looked around to see what happened to light and what changed. And He really wasn't riding a light beam. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not like he really saw from the natural what happened. So he obviously got that from the Lord. He got a revelation because if he pictured himself riding that light beam and he saw light dilate and he saw what happened with the effects of, of that light speed on light itself, which is what he ended up making him come up with E equals mc squared, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, 
That whole revelation came about because he was seeking wisdom. And a lot of people don't realize this. Einstein believed in God, and he was a praying individual. And so I believe he was seeking God. He was looking for wisdom. In his method, he imagined himself riding a beam of light, and God said, okay, let me show you what would happen. Let me show you light dilation. Let me show you the effects of relativity. And then that keyed off in Einstein, oh, well, if that's true, then this. And if that's true, then this. And then he came up with the mathematical formula, the equation that expressed that. And everything that has come out of that, a nuclear energy, every, our understanding of, of how physics work, all of that came out of what I believe, personally, was a revelation from God. So a lot of the things that we think of as man's great wisdom and invention really came from God because he is the source of revelation knowledge. Now, by faith we understand the universe was created by God's command. By means of this faith, the key here is this. It is not your intellect that you need to draw on to understand faith. It is not your mental realm that faith operates in. Faith doesn't operate in the mental realm, it operates in the spiritual realm. You are a spirit, you have a mind, will, and emotions, you live in a physical body. Faith is a spiritual substance. It's a spiritual energy. And in order to understand faith, you've got to understand it by means of the spirit. Now, let's look at a scripture over in John chapter 4, and maybe we'll see it in a little different light than we normally have seen it in the past. And that is when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, and, uh, you know, Jesus told her all kinds of things about her past, and you know, that she was married before and got divorced several times and all this kind of stuff. And the woman said unto him in verse 19 of John chapter 4, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. She was right on top of things, wasn't she? <laughs> Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Now, <clears throat> I don't want you talking anymore about my life, <laughs> so I'm going to try to distract you here. Uh, I'm going to come up with some religious question. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, and I'm sure was thinking, don't try to distract me. I, that's not, that's not going to work. He said, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what, this is verse 22, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. In other words, God used the Jewish nation to bring the light of the Word of God into the earth. The hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers, verse 23, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now, that's what I'm trying to get to here. God's a spirit. Faith is of the spirit. Faith operates in the spiritual realm. Faith operates based on spiritual principle. For us to understand faith, we've got to do it by faith. Even the understanding of faith has to come by means of faith. But let's look at this, where he, what he's saying here. The true worshippers worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit... Well, that makes sense, because the very verse 24, the very next verse says God is a spirit. So if you've got to worship Him, you've got to worship Him in spirit. That's kind of his point here. Shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And that in truth, I think, is really a key thing for us to kind of focus on here. Because faith is a revelation of truth. Faith is a revelation of truth. Now let's go back to that doctor's report that we were talking about earlier. From the doctor's perspective, 
They believed that they knew what the report would be. They looked at my case. They looked at what had happened with me and my liver and condition it was in and all the reports they had. They believed, based on what they knew in the natural, that they knew what the results were going to be. My faith was in something I couldn't see. My faith was in the Word of God. I didn't care what their report was, or you know, good or bad, didn't matter, because I had a report of the Word of God. But because of that, it changed the natural into what the Spirit said. Okay? So, if God can create the world's nature, natural realm, what we see with faith, which we can't see of natural, then it shouldn't be such an amazing thing that we could use our faith and the Word of God to change the natural things of this earth into the image of what we are believing for. In other words, health and healing. So it didn't matter what my liver was doing. What I had to do was believe it was well, it was whole, that every cell and every organ of my body functions perfectly as God designed it to function. It had to get in line with the Word of God, which meant it had to change. Now, once it changed and once it lined up with the Word, then whatever test they chose to run demonstrated to them that it was fine, that it was well. It was amazing to me recently when I went back to the doctor and she ran all these tests, that after the test came back, I mean, she was all, oh, oh, oh we get these tests back, we're going to have to schedule this and do that. And blah, blah. She had all this whole plan worked out. It's amazing to me that once she got the test back and saw everything was fine, she just said, I'll see you in six months. <laughs> Her whole attitude changed. Her whole approach changed. Why? Because she was now looking at natural evidence that what I believed the whole time was true, that I was healed. But now she knows I'm healed. So the tests were effective to help her, but they didn't help me one way or the other. Because what I believe is still the same thing I believed before the tests were ever run. Now I'm, you know, pint low on my blood, but... <laughs> But other than that, <laughs> and you know, thankfully that comes back, so <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> but the thing is, at least now they know. And they don't have to panic and freak out and schedule a bunch of procedures and all kinds of things that I don't even need. So everybody's happy. But it really reinforced to me that it's by faith we understand. It's by means of faith that we have to look at everything in our lives, everything around us. We have to be moved only <clears throat> by the Word of God, not by the natural, not by symptoms, not by circumstances. I mean, you could look at your checkbook and be moved. <laughs> you know, you got a big bill and you look at your checkbook and eh, there's not enough to cover it. Well, then you're going to have to get down and say, well, praise the Lord, my God shall supply all my need <laughs> according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus, according to Philippians 4.19. I'm a tither and I'm a giver. And as a tither and as a giver, God meets my need. And I like the fact that that says He meets my need, not just all my individual needs, but need. Whatever I need, at any point I need it, He meets that. And I've had time and time and time again where the checkbook ended up looking bad, but by the time the thing needed to be paid, the checkbook agreed I had the money to pay it. And I'd look around and go, oh, I don't know where that came from, but praise the Lord! <laughs> and was able to pay the bill. Time and time and time. Things just, you know, I had... <laughs> I had a roommate in college. You know, pastors got his roommate stories. I got my roommate stories. And my roommate in college, uh, believer, Christian, 
heard all the same teaching I heard, listened to the same tapes I listened to. But his approach was that he got mad at me. And he said, I don't understand this. I said, well, what's the matter? He said, I don't care what comes up. I don't care what the situation is. You always come out ahead. I said, well, yeah. <laughs> and of course, that made him matter. Why? Uh, I just don't understand this. It doesn't work out that way for me. And I thought to myself, seems to me we're having what we say. <laughs> I have what I say. My need's met. You have what you say, your need's not that. <laughs> and he also wasn't tithing and giving and doing all the things that are necessary to prosper. And so I tried to sit him down and explain to him, I know that, I know that, now I know that. Well, it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to put it in gear. <laughs> you, gotta, you may know how to run a, a straight shift. You may know how to change the gears and use the clutch and let her slip off and you know, all those good things, but until you do it, you're not driving. <laughs> so that's what he needed to do. He needed to apply what he knew. Now, he could probably give me chapter and verse well as I could because, like I said, he heard all the same teaching I did. But instead of actually doing it, taking the time to meditate on it, taking the time to actually apply himself, he used his energy to get mad at me just because he was working for me. And he was like, God likes you better than me, kind of attitude. No, he don't. God doesn't like me any better than he likes you, doesn't like you any better than he likes me. He is no respecter of persons. Okay? Now, he happens to think that we're all his favorites. <laughs> you know, he looks, we're the apple of his eye, praise the Lord. But that's us collectively, Christians, believers. So yeah, praise the Lord, I, my needs are met. Yeah, praise the Lord, I'm the healed of the Lord. I walk in the things of God, I'm blessed and highly favored. You know, praise the Lord, that's again, that's my confession. If you listen to any of my messages, you will hear me say at the end of the message, I believe you are blessed and highly favored. That's just my confession, and it should be yours as well. Because we have inside information. We know what we know that we know that we know it in our knower. And if we'll just apply what we know, and by faith understand everything and how it works, then we can live a life of blessing, a life of favor, a life of success. And, you know, it gets better all the time. I mean, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I certainly do not say I have arrived. I'm like Paul. You know, I hadn't arrived yet. But I'm a whole lot better than I was. <laughs> and I like the direction I'm headed in, in terms of blessing and healing and all those good things. And I plan to get better, and I plan to get stronger, and I plan to prosper even more, and on and on and on. But in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy what God's got me doing now, and what He's instructing me in now. And I'm telling you, you know, I don't, I started to say it's just me. I know it's not just me. But have you noticed since we got into this building, and Pastor has been enjoying being here, the revelation knowledge has just turned up a couple of clicks. I mean, whoo, the preaching is just better. I'm not that it's ever bad. It's good all the time. But I mean, he's just getting in some good stuff. And I have been enjoying it. And it's just been keying me off in different directions of study. And oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I, oh, I got I to study that out. And, you know, I mean, it just keeps me going. And uh, pastor just relaxed and just enjoying himself. It's, it's fun to watch him enjoy the building and the, and the doors. You know, Don't those doors look good, Dr. Bill? Yes, they do. They really do. And they do. But I'm thinking to myself, you know, I don't normally get excited about doors. <laughs> I get excited about computers. I get excited about electronics. Doors are not my thing. But pastor, you go on, you enjoy your doors. <laughs> 
And don't get me wrong, I like the doors, I think they're pretty, all of that, I, th I, I like the look, I think the building's much more modern and all those good things, but it was just fun watching him get giddy about doors. You know, see the doors? Look at those doors. <laughs> you know, and when I was sitting here, they were installing them. Pastor told me, now send me, send me pictures. Send me pictures all along the way. I want to see how they, I want to see that. I want to see how they do that. Because he couldn't be here. You know, he was having to work. And I'm here to unlock the door and let him in and, you know, just be here. And so he's got me taking pictures. So I'm here taking pictures, taking pictures, sending the pictures. Ooh, oh, that looks good. Yeah, okay. Did they do this? Did they do that? What about this? Yes, Pastor. They did this and they did that. Okay, let me tell him. <laughs> it's like he was here. <laughs> but I just got a kick out of it. It wasn't, it wasn't imposition on me. It was fun just to see him enjoy the blessings of the Lord. I mean, praise the Lord. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm enjoying it too. I mean, when, when we were looking for a building, I was driving around looking at buildings. I was sending him pictures. I was, did you look at, did you see this in there? Did you see that? Did you see this? Yes, Dr. Bill saw that. Did you see this one? Yes, yeah, I saw that one. And you know, well, that's too expensive. Well, that's too big. That's too small. That's this. That's this. On and on and on. I kept bugging him. I finally told him, I said, Pastor, if I get to the point I'm bugging you too much with all these, you know, listings, just tell me. He said, oh, no, no, you keep it up, keep it up. I thought to myself, yeah, you're just saying it keeps you busy. You keep doing that because <laughs> he's going to wait till he hears from God. You know what I'm saying? And so the, the series of events that got us into this building, who in the world would ever have thought it would have worked out the way it did? And yet you look at it, it's a miracle. And you, you sit back and go, I could have saved myself a whole lot of time, effort, and energy if I'd have just, you know, let God do it all in the first place instead of doing all that running around and looking and picture taking and, you know, listed looking. But you know what? I enjoyed it. I had fun doing it. It wasn't, again, an imposition. I just, I like to keep in gear. I like to keep doing, going, applying myself. I mean, when you're operating in faith, one of the things you need to do is picture things and get an image of things. Now, you know, uh, if I'm looking for a piece of equipment, electronic equipment, I'll picture myself working on it. I'll see myself working on it. I'll see what I'm gonna do with it. I'll plan out everything I've got in mind for it. Oh, no, 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 I got some equipment right now that's gonna be coming from Amazon tomorrow, and I already know what I'm gonna do with it. And I'm, I've, in my mind, so I lay there at bed, and I picture, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I'm going to hook it up this way. All kinds, it's just, that's the way I work. You know, and a long time ago, the Lord showed me that that's a lot of how faith works, is picturing it, image, imaging it in your spirit, and then it comes, draws out of your spirit and comes into manifestation. And, you know, that's kind of weird that you do that with equipment, but yeah, that, that's just me. I'm, I like electronics. And these electronics is going to come this coming in. It's going to be fun. So I get excited about it. You know, I get excited about these things like pastors excited about the doors. <laughs> so, but applying your faith. I've always got a faith project. I've always got projects going on. I'm always believing for something. So, when we were looking for buildings, I was I was picturing buildings. What do we need? Where do we need to be? What is it? I kept asking Pastor, where are you, where are you looking to put the, uh, for the building to be? Oh, uh, here and there. And he'd give me all kinds of places. And it would change every week. And I'd think, I can't look in an area unless you give me an area. And I thought, well, I'll just hang loose. And then we ended up over here, and I thought, that's not where you said. <laughs> and yet, this is where we need to be. This is our property. And now that we're here, I'm like, well, this is a great place. I'd have never thought to look here. So you just got to, it's like, <laughs> sometimes I tell people, you know, it's like if you stay in motion, God will just kind of keep you course corrected and you'll end up where you need to be, you know. <laughs> but at least stay moving. <laughs> keep after it. Don't just sit back. So that's just, that's the way I work. You know, Brother Hagen, 
uh, was one not to jump out ahead of himself. I'm kind of one to jump out ahead of myself. I have to watch out. I have to kind of, I have to throttle back because I tend to be a goer and a doer and a, you know, oh, we can do this, we can do that. And before you know it, I've got this whole thing planned out and I hadn't even checked in on, is that what we need to be doing? <laughs> so I have to pull, I have to throttle back. And you know, Brother Hagen was always one to, you got to drag me where you want me to be, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> so somewhere in the middle, <laughs> we get it done. But I tell you, I'm, I'm excited about where we're at. I'm excited about what God's doing. And I'm looking forward to all the great things that God has for us. And I'm just believing that what we've seen tonight, what we've looked at tonight, uh, will be keys to maybe getting some of your juices flowing and your mind working and your understanding of faith through the Word and through by, by means of faith we understand. Hallelujah. Okay? Praise the Lord. So let's stop here and we'll just believe that uh, those of you that want to contribute can do so electronically. <clears throat> if you want to use the Cash App, you can do that. Uh, if uh, you want to contribute here in the, in the building, Brother Joe's got... So actually, we've got the envelopes there in the back of the seats. So uh, that's good. We've got that available. But let's go ahead and pray and receive our offering tonight. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come and to give into the ministry. We believe, Father, that as we give, it is given to us, pressed down, shaken together, running over men given to our bosom. And our needs are met supernaturally, both for us personally and this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. So as tithers and givers, we contribute what the Lord's instructing us to give to the church. Praise the Lord. And those of you that are online and are giving that way, go ahead and do so. And uh, we're going to be soon getting all of the uh, uh, square cash and all those things uh, switched over. Pastor's got... Uh, I got him some of the paperwork that he needs to... I did the research and, and so forth on changing the name. And uh, I figure if I could do that kind of research and uh, save us some lawyer fees, <laughs> why not do that? So we did that and got those papers to him. Hopefully he'll be able to use that and uh, get some things straightened out. And the bank's all changed to the new name and so forth. So we'll get that done over time. But right now, everything we're doing currently will work. Praise the Lord. So uh, that's the first time I've heard a train here at the new building. Oh, it did last Wednesday? Well, there you go. He's letting us know service is about to be over here. <laughs> Y'all go home. Oh, my. Praise the Lord. All righty. Well, uh, that's what I had for this evening. Those of you that are watching via the Internet, uh, I'm just believing that you receive something here tonight. And just join us next time, Sunday morning at 1030 here at the building or online. At Faith and Victory Church, well, Expedition Church now. I'm like pastor. I'm still getting used to that. I'm, I'm making the transition to a Expedition Church. So join us next time online or in person. Hallelujah.